Welcome to the Determining a Base Flood Elevation in an A-Zone training video brought to you by the Utah Division of Emergency Management Flood Hazards Program and a partnering consultant, WSP. In this training video, we will cover the definition of a BFE and its uses, an overview of the various methods and necessary data, flowcharts to guide you through the decision-making process, and several hands-on examples. BFE Definitions and Uses what is a BFE? BFE stands for Base Flood Elevation. This is the elevation that water rises to during a flood that statistically has 1% chance of occurring any given year. The elevation is typically reported in feet above a vertical datum. FEMA currently uses NAVD88 datum. BFEs are useful to floodplain managers and communities to help manage the National Flood Insurance Program and make sure that development within the floodplain is in compliance with that program. It helps communities establish elevations so that structures that are built within the floodplain are elevated above the base flood, or the 1% annual chance flood. BFBs are usually compared to the elevation of the lowest adjacent grade around structures, which can help reduce risk. Structures built above the BFE are at a lower risk of flooding than those built below the BFE. BFEs are commonly used in many parts of the NFIP program, including floodplain development permits, elevation certificates, no-rise certifications, applications for LOMA, LOMAR, LOMAR-F, and CLOMARS. Local floodplain management ordinances should also reference BFEs. The 44 Code of Federal Regulations, Section 60.3b, defines the regulations required in an approximate zone or Zone A. It is the local floodplain administrator's responsibility to review all development permits and determine if it is reasonably safe from flooding. BFBs are not published on FEMA maps in approximate zones like they are in detailed zones. While BFBs are not always required for Zone A floodplain management, BFBs can help floodplain managers establish reasonably safe from flooding to ensure that the standard is being upheld in the community. There are some scenarios where a BFE is required by the federal regulations to determine whether a development is reasonably safe from flooding. The scenarios are when the development is larger than 50 lots or 5 acres, whichever is less. There are some exceptions to this rule, such as the area within the floodplain will only ever be developed as open space, or if there is a significantly steep elevation drop between planned structures and the floodplain. If one of these exceptions does not apply, a BFE is required and needs to be determined by a detailed method, which we will define shortly. This is a flowchart that can be used to determine whether a BFE is required to determine reasonably safe from flooding in an approximate zone. First, you determine whether the proposed development is larger than 50 lots or 5 acres. If yes, you determine whether any exceptions apply. If no exceptions apply, then a BFE is required and must be determined by a detailed method. If an exception applies or the development is less than 50 lots and 5 acres, you need to check your local ordinance to determine if there are any stricter requirements than the minimum federal standards. If there are, follow the local standards. If not, the federal minimum requirement is that a BFE is not required, but it is still the local floodplain administrator's responsibility to determine if it is reasonably safe from flooding. You can use this flowchart each time you are reviewing a floodplain development in a Zone A to determine whether a BFE is required or not. Next, we will discuss the methods and necessary data to determine a BFE in a Zone A floodplain specifically. Remember, BFEs are not published on the firm map in Zone A's, so we have to determine the BFE using a method. There are two types of methods, detailed methods and simplified methods. As we discussed in the flowchart, detailed methods are required when developments are larger than 5 acres or 50 lots. Otherwise, simplified methods can be used unless otherwise specified by local ordinance. Detailed methods use existing water surface elevation data developed from a reputable hydrologic and hydraulic study. This can be a FEMA study or other reputable source, such as other federal, state, or local agencies. Depending on the type of study, water surface elevations have been calculated at cross-section locations for one-dimensional models or at grid points for two-dimensional models. The methods we will discuss simply interpolate between the locations with known water surface elevations to determine the water surface elevation, or BFE, at the development location. 
If a detailed method is required but water surface elevation data is not available via a model or a report, you must require the development permit applicant to develop a BFE using hydrologic and hydraulic analyses. This does not deem to be a full HECRAS model, but could consist of a couple surveyed cross sections at the site and upstream and downstream, USGS regression equations for hydrology, and normal depth calculation for hydraulics. However, this should be completed by a competent h and engineer to ensure this is the best approach. Simplified methods can be used to develop a BFE when the development size is less than 5 acres and 50 lots. The first method, called data extrapolation, consists of extrapolating a water surface elevation profile from a nearby detailed study to determine the BFE. The second method, called contour interpolation, consists of overlaying the firm map on a topographic map and calculating the BFE between the topographic contours. Depending on the type of model data you have access to, there are several different detailed methods. For one-dimensional models, you may have access to cross-section data in GIS data format or on a map from a report, and corresponding water surface elevation data either in a GIS attribute table or a report table. You may also have access to the actual HECRAS model. For both of these options, you will use the data and Utah's BFE interpolation tool spreadsheet to determine the BFE. For two-dimensional models, you may have access to the water surface elevation contours of the model results. In this scenario, the method will be similar to the methods for one-dimensional models, where you will use the available data in Utah's BFE interpolation tool spreadsheet. If you have access to the water surface elevation output grids, you can use these grids in a GIS application to determine the BFE. The two types of simplified methods have some data viability limitations. The data extrapolation method requires that the proposed development be just upstream or just downstream of a detailed study. This can be used for both paper and digital maps. The contour interpolation method has requirements related to how closely the topographic map and the floodplain map line up with each other. This method has the potential to result in very conservative BFE values. This flowchart can be used to determine which method should be used to determine the BFE for the proposed development. In general, it is recommended that the best available data be used, meaning if you have access to data that allows a detailed method to be used, it's a good idea to use it, even if a detailed method is not required. Using this flowchart, you will first determine what the best data you have access to is. There are numerous sources for detailed method data, but the key is that you need to have a source of water surface elevations upstream and downstream of the proposed development that have been created by a reputable source. This does not necessarily need to be from a FEMA study if effective FEMA data is not accessible. Then, depending on the type of data you have, you can determine which detailed method can be used. If you do not have access to the data required to use a detailed method, you must determine whether a detailed method is just preferred or if it is required. You can go back to the first flowchart to determine this. If a detailed method is not required, you can move on to the simplified method section of the flowchart. Here, you follow the flowchart to determine if either of the simplified methods can be used to determine the BFE for the proposed development. If neither of the simplified methods can be used, or if a detailed method is required but data is not available, a BFE needs to be calculated through a hydrologic and hydraulic analysis. Please see the accompanying videos for hands-on examples.